Lisa, I'm Victoria. I'm Rie. And, and then we have Rowan. We have invited another guest from the blockchain industry to our channel, so I will let Rowan introduce himself. Sure. So um, firstly, thanks for having me. So um, I'm Warren Su. I'm Director and Chief Commercial Officer at CryptoBlock. We're a Hong Kong-based uh, Web3 enablement company working mm -hmm. on both public blockchain and permission blockchain. What's the difference between public, public and blockchain. permission blockchain? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I think public blockchain is what most people would um, be familiar with, the general public. So Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana. How I look at public blockchain, it's basically if let's say the three of us want to get together and spend some money on a server, we could actually set up a node and download the entire ledger of Ethereum. That's pretty much public blockchain. It's public, okay? Everyone Every can access it. Exactly. Okay. Everyone can access it. The information is open for everybody. In permission blockchain, or what we sometimes refer to as enterprise blockchain, mm -hmm. it is closed, okay? So people can only join by uh, invitation and there's a different level of security. The information that's actually being transferred within permission blockchain is a little bit more secure. This is what enables permission blockchain. And so a lot of enterprises and corporates that want to adopt distributed ledger technology mm -hmm. but have sensitive information like banks, insurance companies, they like to use permission blockchain. So some of the chains that you could that you may have heard of within that permission blockchain space, Hyperledger and Quarter, they're the equivalents of your Ethereum's and Bitcoins and Solanas. Mm -hmm. So uh, can I ask for a more concrete example? Say if I'm a bank and I want to offer some service to my commercial client mm -hmm. through blockchain, what kind of service they can offer on blockchain? Sure. So we have a few applications available right now, and trade finance is a space that has a lot of opportunities in terms of blockchain because there's just a lot of disparate parties. There is um, no one standard. There's a lot of authenticity and visibility issues. And so one of the most uh, common challenges that uh, banks and even um, corporates face within uh, trade finance is time, efficiency, um, and also in some cases approvals of certain credit um, applications. And so we have a couple of applications that will solve that, essentially um, increasing efficiency, increasing visibility or authenticity because using that distributed ledger, techno ledger technology, mm -hmm. um, each party can actually see the source of where the information is coming from. Yeah, so that's a really good example of where banks are uh, really embracing this enterprise application, enterprise blockchain technology. And I, I'm just curious, so, so how do you get into this industry? Exactly. Yeah, and how do you start this business? Yeah, or, wow. Or what do you do before this Oh yeah. Role? Sure. Yeah. What do I do before this? I was in banking, so I've been in banking, or well, I had been in banking for about 20 years to start off in Australia. <laughs> Thank you. Spent some time in the UK and then came to Hong Kong across different functions. And my most recent function um, with an American bank was helping multinational companies grow and expand in Asia Pacific. The bank I was working for was really embracing technology and many of the solutions that we were offering our clients involved technology. For me, blockchain, uh, I was really drawn to the blockchain distributed ledger technology. I can see it really being part of our lives in the not too distant future, right? It's similar to what the internet is doing for us now, yeah. right? It's gonna get to a point where people don't even care or really understand how it works, it just works, oh, right? Yeah. Okay, and I think that's- I watch um, TV all the time, but still it doesn't the technology. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, right? exactly, exactly. And I think that's when you really know that yeah. that, that technology has oh, actually yeah. made it into the mainstream. And I think blockchain is gonna be one of those technologies. Uh -huh. And so, when the opportunity came for me to be a part of CryptoBlock, yeah. uh, it was a no-brainer for me. You're from a traditional banking company, mm -hmm. sure. moving to a blockchain company. Don't you see the risk? It is very different. Um, like I said, I do believe in the technology. Um, I, I'm, I feel there's a lot of applications and we're just really scratching the surface. So that's first and foremost. But in terms of the risk, absolutely there is a risk. You know, within the banking industry, it's very secure, relatively secure. <laughs> But I, I like taking risks. Mm. Yeah, Do you from, from believe now. in crypto? So I didn't invest in cryptocurrency, but I did really look into it to try and understand what all the fuss is about. What were some of the problems that Bitcoin, which is the, I guess, the first mainstream um, adopter of this technology. But it wasn't until I actually joined this company and I actually um, went a little deeper that I realized 
you know what, this is something that I kind of believe in. It has some legs. Mm. And so from then I uh, started dabbling. Where did you do the research? Okay, just really traditional channels. Um, YouTube? YouTube. I took a couple of courses whilst I was you still did. with the bank. I did. There's some online courses? Yeah, there's actually a lot of courses, a lot of fintech courses. Um, there's some very specific to distributed ledger technology as well. And a lot of it, is, what I love about it is it's very logical, right? Oh. If you want to get into the programming side, then you're literally learning another language. But in terms yeah. of application, the origins, what it's trying to do, what problems it's trying to solve, what problems it can solve, it's all very logical. Mm. So if you want to get in the industry, learn about it. Mm -hmm. Get as much information as you can, understand the industry, know the technology to a certain degree, and then embrace it and get involved, right? Um, but then there are so many information on YouTube, you don't, you don't know if it's true. Exactly. You can't, you can't actually is, worry about it. Yeah, are they, true. you know, talking about the right thing or are these information legit? How do you do the judgment? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So I think when you look at content, especially on YouTube, I kind of look at different levels. So if you're looking at application, then I think that a lot of the times it could be speculative, yeah. especially if you're looking at particular projects, right? right? How, how real is this? Yeah. Is that really They're going to do well. this? Yeah. But if you look at the technology, I think it's more black and white, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at, say, how this technology works, what it's trying to solve, it's more black and white and True. it's... There's less grey area. That is the type of content I think you can probably be more, be more comfortable with mm -hmm. and it's easier to get. Okay, so um, any prediction on how Binance would uh, merge or leverage on, on, on blockchain tech in three to five years? Sure. Um, I think the areas that come to my mind immediately is cross-border payments, transactions. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, transactions, there are a lot of intermediaries can be costly and timely. So I think with distributed ledger technology, moving money from one country to another can uh, be a lot yeah. more efficient, right. that's, that's actually what the reason why I love crypto so much. So, so basically I can send Bitcoin or Ethereum to my friend in Canada yeah. within an hour. So even when the block is actually really stuck, yeah. But still, usually you can do it within a day. But yep. with bank, I have to input all the information, so. Swift, call, uh, account name, bank right. name, and then and then after I've done it, input all the information for half an hour, it will still, still take there two will be to some three errors. hours yeah. for me to transfer money to another country. I just and get it that will experience. It will require yeah. lots of approval as well. So my Absolutely. bank have to approve it, and then the receiver, banks have to approve exactly. it. So yeah, it's just really time consuming. You're absolutely right. And in some cases, there's an intermediary bank or multiple intermediary banks that actually has to go through. So yes, I think that's something that we may see mm -hmm. and a real opportunity for the, for the banking industry to actually speed along and actually make that cross-border payment a little bit more efficient. And then the other area where I think there is a real opportunity is just onboarding. So we've all opened accounts. Sometimes there's a lot of information they need. And now if you apply that to say a major corporate with multiple directors, onboarding and KYC is actually very, very time consuming for both the bank and the mm. customer. So with this technology, I think there's real opportunities to actually get data directly from the source. Mm. So rather than you having to go verify, validate or certify a document with a justice of peace or an accountant, perhaps the bank can go directly to the source and actually ask for documents so that you don't have to go through all that trouble. So I see that the whole onboarding process can really benefit from distributed ledger technology. Because people often criticize like blockchain and, and, and crypto for being used for money laundering. But what you are saying is the whole compliance, know your customer process can actually be done on blockchain. Is that what you're saying? Why not? Oh, Why not, okay. right? And so we can actually go through the KYC without actually even introducing tokens, right? It could just be for information sharing. I feel that there is an opportunity there and I, I think there are a couple of companies already working on this type of stuff. I, I keep on going back to it. Actually signing up and coming up with applications is easy, but adoption has always been the challenge, especially within enterprise. So once you're signed up, how many transactions are actually going to happen? Because you need certain, it's, it's a network effect, you need enough people. Mm to actually come and endorse and start using it for this to be effective. And all it takes is for a couple of people to go, you know what, I don't want to use that application and the whole thing falls yeah. down. Yeah. That's where I spend a lot of my time as the Chief Commercial Officer, it's commercialization and assessing whether mm -hmm. certain applications has the support mm -hmm. and sponsorship to get off the ground. That's part of my job to consult and help potential car clients and partners. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you do co-create projects and enterprise projects. Mm -hmm. Can you share some, some of 
business case with us? Yeah, sure. So on the enterprise, um, we talk a lot about trade finance. So we are a founding member and, and, and still the developer for a very well-known um, blockchain platform that processes letters of credit or bank guarantees. That was established in 2017 slash 2018, so that's still going strong. That's your first project? That was our very first project, okay? And this is how where... How did you pitch this project? How, how do people trust your company with this project? So we, uh, our co-founder, and current CEO. He is um, really well regarded in this space. He's um, a doctor of cryptography, very well regarded for some of his work with universities, also some time he spent with Astri. Mm -hmm. And so he as an individual has a very strong re reputation in this space. And during his time with Astri, he developed some relationships with some of the key banks who really wanted to launch an application to solve the problem of uh, long processing times within the letters of credit or or trade finance. And so when that opportunity came about, he started CryptoBlock. And so with that successful use case of this uh, trade finance application, it's just been a snowball, mm. right? Because not many companies like ours have actually successfully, A, built an application, mm. B, stood the test of time and actually C, had adoption and have yeah. actually uh, transactions. And then the word of mouth, right? And so the next major tra major application was with the Hong Kong Federation of Insurers. So we actually built them an application that uh, allows them to have better visibility around motor insurance, um, addressing the issue of motor insurance fraud. I was surprised was as uh, as high in terms of the fraud count as, as it actually is. So they built an application to solve that problem. and really proud to be a part of that. So that particular application, it's called Midas, and it sees about 400,000 transactions a year. So that is a lot for a permission blockchain. That is a lot. And it's just going up and up. One of the keys to success for, for Midas, this particular application, is that the user interface is very simple, right? So if you jumped on, you jumped on, I jumped on, you wouldn't even need to know that this is a blockchain application. It just looks like a web-based application. Mm. Okay, so in the back end is the blockchain. That's where the magic happens. And so the way the information is transferred, and if you're the Department of Transport, and I'm a customer, and I want to register my vehicle, or and I give you the insurance, all you have to do is jump online, look at a very standard web interface, but know that it's been approved, that whatever information comes out here, you can accept. All the um, compliance and audits have already been done. You enter the insurance number, blah, blah, blah. the information goes out to the blockchain, okay, and says to the insurance companies who are also on the blockchain, did you in fact issue this insurance or is this something that this customer has just docked up and put, printed themselves? Because that's the issue of fraud that um, they were facing. The beauty of what we do here is you don't need to know what blockchain is. One last question. Sure. If you meet Satoshi Nakamoto yeah. in the lift, sure. yeah, any okay. message you want to tell him or you want to say to tell him? Tell him, or it could be her. Oh yeah, yeah right. It could be her. Yeah. I'd just, uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I'd say well done. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> You're a very honest guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely ask him to give me his private key. <laughs> He's probably I'm forgotten it. He's probably yeah. forgotten it. He's probably forgotten. He didn't realize how important it was because of so many years ago. Um, no. So what? I I, I would. You only question. have 15 seconds. If Come I have on. 15 seconds, what? Would I <laughs> oh gosh. I would say I'd probably ask him, "What's your real name?" <laughs> okay. What's your real name? What's your number? Let's chat. <laughs> Okay. Because that's I don't good. think 15 seconds is enough yeah. with yeah. this guy. Yeah. So uh, that's my answer. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. So Thank you so much. For your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye